ever watched a YouTube video and wondered how did that person make such an amazing video? The kind of video you stick around to the end. The one you will have to call your buddies up later and ask them if they watched it. Have you wondered how you can make videos like these? Just like flying a paramotor, it can be done with a lot of time, effort, and practice. When I first started watching YouTube videos of men and women flying paramotors, I was in awe and baffled that some ordinary guy like me could be flying just like the people I was watching. Before I even got my first piece of equipment, I was looking at pictures of it, trying to figure out where I wanted to mount my cameras. You know, even still now, I'll go back and I'll watch some of the old footage of my original videos. And, you know, back then I was using these cheap $30 action cameras. And as you can see here, the video footage was just garbage. If you're planning on making videos, I would highly suggest that you spend a little extra money, get some good cameras with stabilization. Personally, I use two GoPro 7s and I also use an Insta360. As I continued to put out videos, it almost became a game or challenge to see how many views and likes I could get and see how many subscribers I would gain or lose. Some videos were made just to see where I flew, while some videos were educational, like how to use the app PPGPS, and some were more comical, like Bohemian Rhapsody for paramotors. Then I came across a video that would change the way I viewed making videos altogether and going forward. How to make good videos, paramotors. By Matt Woodworth, Woody as most people call him, on his YouTube channel Woody's Gamertag, said that you need to connect with your audience. You also need to educate your audience and entertain them, and at the same time have a good production value. He said even having just two of these three would make a good video. I look back now at my videos and realize that no one wants to see me kiting a wing or flying for 20 minutes and not talking. He also went on to say that you don't need to be a cheap copy of someone else be original. Woody's not the only person who feels this way. Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down with one of the most famous paramotor pilots on YouTube, Tucker Gott. Tucker has built his paramotor channel to over 1.3 million subscribers and has inspired thousands of pilots like myself to get into powered paragliding. I asked Tucker to spend five minutes with me and share why he started flying, what makes him so passionate about continuing to fly, and what he would recommend to someone who wants to create paramotor YouTube videos. He ended up graciously spending more time with me than just five minutes, with great insight, too good not to share. So at the end of this video, there will be a link to an additional video going further into his thoughts, but for now, here's just a small bit of what he had to say. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Um, the main reason I wanted to get into paramotoring, I mean, I've been in aviation pretty much all my life, but I had seen paramotors on YouTube at a pretty young age, and it was just always that thing that I knew I wanted to do, and I don't know, there's just something about it that you see the freedom, and it seems like that perfect flying experience that everyone dreams about, so it was always just in the back of my mind that I wanted to do that, and eventually when I got into it, it was pretty much more than I expected. And the reason I keep doing it is pretty much exactly that. Flying a paramotor is like, it's like the flying dream everyone has. You don't have a cockpit around you. You're just, you feel like a bird. It's the most free feeling you can ever experience. And aside from that, um, a lot of things like fixed wing aviation um, or skydiving, you have to be at a drop zone, you have to have hangar rent, you have to be in a certain place with a certain group of people or paramotor, you keep it in your garage, you throw it in your truck, you drive wherever you wanna drive and it's completely independent. And that's one of the biggest things that keeps me coming back to is that I can fly from my home park and that never gets boring or I can take my paramotor across the country and go explore any place that a lot of people don't get to see from our perspective. So obviously everybody's watching your videos and as people watch these videos and they think, man, I would love to be flying a paramotor and I could get up there and I could put a camera on my helmet and I could be making videos. All these people are thinking that, what advice would you give to someone who is considering getting into the sport and wants to start making YouTube videos, paravlogging? I think there's a couple things. As a beginner, I think a lot of people jump right into it because they see paramotoring and YouTube videos as going like hand in hand. But a lot of times I feel like you kind of should wait a little while before you start getting distracted with video making or at least do it in a way that doesn't distract you, like keep the filming on the ground or whatever until you build up, you go through training, you get a solid foundation and you kind of know what you're doing because 
honestly, filming and narrating while flying, it definitely kind of takes away um, your attention to certain things. So I think it's important to balance that safety aspect. But also, I think one of the most important things is just telling a story. Um, kind of creating a storyline in the video, having a beginning, middle, and an end to it is super important. Like a lot of people try to focus on like getting better camera gear, but a lot of people say like having the best camera doesn't matter. You can use a cheapo GoPro and your phone and tell a really good story and have a super engaging video if you convey that story. And the other thing, I think as we see more and more people getting into the sport, there's more and more YouTube channels. And I think it's becoming more important to kind of like different, differentiate yourself, do something unique and um, have kind of an idea of like what defines you from the rest. Like a good example is Kyle Oakley. I think a lot of people see him as more of the informative weather guy. Um, and that's what he kind of shares in his videos. Anthony Vela is like the high production quality guy. So I think having like a unique feature to your channel is super important. Being original sounds like it's something that should be pretty easy to do. Just be yourself. Until you realize that you're watching a lot of YouTube vloggers that are really influencing you and really making you who you are. There are many vloggers I follow and like, but whose styles are different in many ways and easily have made an impact on many up and coming vloggers. Rick Davies, whose YouTube channel is PPG Gorilla, entertains his audience in many ways, from being comical to educational to doing product reviews. Rick flies with five cameras rolling on each flight to give his audience many viewpoints and keep their attention. With five cameras rolling, his editing time can easily be described as countless hours. Rick, like many people in the paramotoring community, makes himself available to people with questions. It was through Facebook Messenger back in January of 2019 that I reached out to Rick with a question and he replied. This initial interaction would lead us to collaborating on many videos and resolve into a very close friendship. Kyle O'Glee is a pharmacist by day and a paramotor instructor by night and a paramotor pilot year round. He is the paramotor pilot's weatherman, as no one has done more for our sport educating on weather through his videos than Kyle. Different from Rick, Kyle uses only one camera when he flies and vlogs nonstop. He too keeps his audience entertained and educated. Anthony Vela and Tom Kubot have taken the production level of their videos into an entirely new category. Each with a unique style from the other, they both have a professionalism that reflects a high quality budget production while entertaining and educating. There are so many YouTube vloggers I could highlight such as Tucker God and Woody's Gamertag, also Mark Honeycutt, Mark Amundsen, Dave Ruff, and the list goes on. All these people find a way to connect with me and the rest of their audiences. In the description of this video, I will leave several links to these and several other channels you can check out and subscribe to. Should you set your standards at the levels of the people I just mentioned? No, absolutely not. Just remember what Tucker and Woody said. Make sure you're educating your audience, make sure you're entertaining your audience, and make sure you're connecting with your audience. Go out and have fun. So the next question is, is how do you go about making a video? There are two ways you can make a video. Plan it and go fly, or just go fly and see what happens on your flight. Just remember that making videos is not why you started flying. Many times I will record with the camera in case anything does happen, but most of the time I just want to escape and enjoy my flight without feeling like I'm on stage. Next is figuring out your camera placement. Remember that one camera can make a good video just like on a Kyle O video. And if you can have multiple cameras like PPG Gorilla, that also will make for a good video too. For me, I always fly with a camera on my helmet which will record my audio and in a few minutes we can talk about the importance of audio. Other camera placement options on a trike would be a crossbar, mounted to the cage, on the front axle, on a selfie stick, or on a chase camera. For a foot launcher, you could use one mounted to your cage, on the tow mount, on a selfie stick, or on a chase camera, in addition to your helmet as well. I have recently seen some people mount a camera to their glider facing down. Several vloggers have different ways they set up their audio. A while ago, I made a video on my setup and I still use that same setup to this day. In the description below, I will leave a link to that video in case you are interested in setting up your audio to vlog while you're flying as well. Now that you have all of your video, it's now time to edit and this is where the real work begins. The best advice I can give to you is that you should try to make this as an art form for yourself. It takes time, lots and lots of time. There are several programs you can use. Pick the one that's comfortable for you and your budget and learn the program inside and out. 
The last thing you need to do is create eye-catching thumbnails to attract viewers. Make it similar in style to your other thumbnails so your audience recognizes your style and relates to you. If you're looking to do all this just to get subscribers and eventually make a lot of money at YouTube, you're probably choosing a very difficult career path for yourself. Just remember, this is supposed to be fun. Going up, flying, making videos, you're doing this for you and really nobody else. On the next episode of This Crazy Paramoto Life, we are heading down to Florida to take part in the second annual Sky Pirates Poker Run to raise money for Resurgence PPG. We will discuss how to prepare for a fly-in or other paramotor event and see just how safe and fun they can be. If you have not had an opportunity to subscribe to this channel, you can start by clicking on the circle on the left. In the middle is a link to the last episode, and on the right is a link to more of my interview with Tucker Gott. Thanks again for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time on This Crazy Paramotor Life.